section 195 by sampana said thus addressed drishtadimya at foremost of the lunar princes cheerfully said on to his father all that had happened and by whom krishna had been won and the prince said with large red eyes attired in deer skin and resembling a celestial in beauty the youth who stringed that foremost of bows and brought down to the ground the mark set on high was soon surrounded by the foremost of brahmanas who also offered him their homage for the feat he had achieved incapable of bearing the sight of a foe and endure with great activity he began to exert his prowess and surrounded by the brahmanas he resembled the thunder bird in indra standing in the midst of the celestial and the rishis and like a she elephant following the leader of a herd krishna cheerfully followed that youth catching hold of his deer skin then when the assembled monarchs incapable of bearing that sight rose up in wrath and advanced for fight there rose up another hero who tearing up a large tree rushed round that concourse of kings feeling them right and left like yama himself smiting down creatures endured with life then who monarch the assembled kings stood motionless looked at the couple of heroes while they resembling the sun and the moon taking krishna with them left the amphitheater and wended into the abode of a potter in suburbs of the town and there at the potter's abode sat a lady like on to a flame of fire who i think is their mother and around her also sat three other foremost of men each of whom was like on to fire and the couple of heroes having approached her paid homage on to her feet and they said on to krishna also to do the same and keeping krishna with her those foremost of men all went round the round of elimos elimo scenery visits some time after when they returned krishna taking from them what they had obtained in arms devoted a portion thereof to the gods and gave another portion away in gift to brahmanas and of what remained after this she gave a portion to that venerable lady and distributed the rest amongst those five foremost of men and she took a little for herself and yet it last of all then who monarch should they all laid themselves down for sleep krishna lying along the line of their feet as their nether pillow and the bed on which they lay was made of kusha grass upon which was spread their deer skins and before going to sleep they talked on diverse subjects in voices deep as of black clouds the talk of those heroes indicated them to be neither vaishyas nor sudras nor brahmanas without doubt o monarch they are bulls among kshatriyas their discourse having been on military subjects it seems o father that our hope hath been fortified for we have heard that the sons of kunti all escaped from that conflagration of the house of lack from the way in which the mark was shot down by that youth and the strength with which the bow was strangled by him and the manner in which i have heard them talk with one another proves conclusively O monarch, that they are the sons of Pritha, wandering in disguise. Hearing these words of his son, King Drupada, became exceedingly glad, and he sent on to them his priest, directing him to ascertain who they were, and whether they were the sons of the illustrious Pandu. Thus directed, the king's priest went on to them, and applauding them all, delivered the king's message to Dhulai. saying hey who are worthy of preference in everything the moon giving king of the earth drupada is desirous of ascertaining who ye are beholding this one 
who hath shot down the mark, is joy knoweth no bounds, giving us all particulars of your family and tribe. Bless ye your feet on the heads of your foes, and gladden the hearts of the king of Panchala, and his mind, and his men, and mine also. King Pandu was the dear friend of Drupada, and was regarded by him as his counter self. And Drupada had all along cherished the desire of bestowing this daughter of his upon Pandu as his daughter-in-law, a hero of features, perfectly faultless. King Drupada had all along cherished this desire in his heart that Arjuna of strong and long arms might wed this daughter of his according to the ordinance. If that had become possible, nothing could be better, nothing more beneficial, nothing more conductive to fame and virtue, so far as Drupada is concerned. Having said this, the priest remained silent and humbly waited for an answer. Beholding him sitting thus, the king Yudhishthira commanded Bhima, who sat near, saying, Let water to wash his feet with and the Hargya be offered unto this Brahmana. He is King Drupada's priest, and therefore worthy of great respect. We should worship him with more than ordinary reverence. Then O Monarch, Bhima, did as directed, accepting the worship thus offered unto him. The Brahmana, with a joyous heart, sat at his ease, and Yudhishthira addressed him and said, The King of the Panchalas hath by fixing a special kind of dover, even away his daughter according to the practice of his order and not freely. His hero hath by satisfying that demand won the princess. King Drupada, therefore, hath nothing now to say in regard to the race, tribe, family and the disposition of him who hath performed that feat. Indeed, all these queries have been answered by the swinging of the bow and the shooting down of the mark. It is by doing what he had directed that this illustrious hero hath brought away Krishna from the mo- from among the assembled monarchs. Under these circumstances, the king of the lunar race should not indulge in any regrets which can only make him unhappy without mending matters in the least. The desire that King Drupada hath all along cherished will be accomplished for his handsome princess birth. I think every auspicious mark, none that is weak in strength, would string that bow, and none of mean birth and unaccomplished in arms could have shot down the mark. It behoveth not, therefore, the king of the Panjalas to grieve for his daughter today nor can anybody in the world harm to that act of shooting down the mark. Therefore, the king should not grieve for what must take its course. While Yudhishthira was saying all this, another messenger from the king of the Panchalas, coming thither in haste, said, The Nupithal feast is ready. Thus ends the 195th section in the Vaivahika Parva of the Adi Parva.